He's a philosopher. We read just a few chapters and yeah, today we are on chapter 1.4 from the book, The Law of Cause and Effect That Shapes Fate. Everything in this world exists with the support and involvement of those around it. So depending on the environment, the result can vary greatly. Hume points out that there is no such thing as coincidence in this world, but because we do not know the true cause of events, many of us have such misunderstandings. The reason why we cannot pinpoint the true cause is that a single outcome does not result from a single cause but from a myriad of diverse factors, including small unseen causes, which are all intertwined like a web. Nothing in this world exists by itself, but is supported and related to the things around it. For example, what causes rice to appear is seeds. Without seeds, rice can never be produced. However, no matter how many seeds there are, they will not grow without the right environment, including sunlight, water, air, soil, and fertilizer. We need an environment that helps the direct cause, which is the seed in this case, become the result or rice. Such indirect causes are called conditions in Buddhist philosophy. The condition of the result, a grain of rice, is remarkably extensive. If the sun had not been created 4.6 billion years ago, we would not be able to receive sunlight. So we must first be thankful for the sun. Actually, I think it's a mistranslation here. <laughs> That's why I said it's a tentative translation. So if the sun had not come into existence 4.6 billion years ago, we would not be able to receive sunlight. So we must first be thankful for the sun. We take it for granted that the earth has air, but if the earth were smaller, gravity would be smaller and would not be able to keep the air. Not only rice paddies that grow rice, but the entire earth is the condition. Furthermore, you might think that the presence of the moon has no effect, but in fact, all life forms benefit from it. The Earth rotates once in 24 hours because the gravitational pull of the moon slows it down. If there were no moon, it would rotate once every eight hours. If day and night alternated in just eight hours, Creatures would have to wake up, eat, defecate, and sleep at three times the speed of the current cycle. Wow. <laughs> also, when the earth rotates that fast, strong winds are always blowing on the ground. Plants would have grown to spread over the ground with only a few leaves so as not to be blown away. Breathing would also become difficult on land so only creatures with protected noses and hard shells might have thrived. Without the moon, rice and humans would not have existed. Furthermore, the Andromeda galaxy, which lies 230,000 light years away, is not unrelated to our own Milky Way galaxy. From the perspective of the vast universe, a galaxy that is only 230,000 light years away is very close. The two galaxies are approaching each other at a speed of 300 kilometers per second. A bullet train travels at 300 kilometers per second and are expected to collide in 2.5 billion years. If the Andromeda galaxy had been a little closer we would be in the middle of a galaxy collision right now and would not have been able to harvest any rice. <laughs> According to modern physics, an individual atom is never an isolated entity, but is connected to every other atom. As Arthur Eddington, the English astronomer, poetically put it, 
When electrons vibrate, the universe shakes. Every little event on Earth is affected by the entire universe, and the two are closely intertwined. What modern cosmology strongly argues today is that our everyday circumstances would not be viable without the distant parts of the universe. Our daily experiences are so closely tied down to the most trivial details to the properties of the universe on such a massive scale that it is almost impossible to consider the two in isolation. From Time, Space, and Medicine by Larry Dossi. The environment and conditions that make the rice, har make the rice harvest possible are throughout the macrocosm. So the summary is what helps a cause produce a result is a condition. And these conditions are quite widespread, spanning the whole universe. That's how the joy of a person who understands the Dharma in its entirety also becomes as vast as the sky. That's when we gain the oneness with the wisdom of the Buddha. So good job, everyone, for being here, practicing together. Today's Wednesday. We're going to have the Karma Lab at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye. Thank you, Bita. You're welcome, Gary. Bye, Anubhita. Oh, of course. Take care. Bye, Stan.